Okay, so this video just quickly clarifies the different hedges that's available. That is uh, what most of this um, topic is about. So, here are the five that we listed in the notes. First, the first two are not um, really hedging instruments. So, a natural hedge is just where if we import from the United States, but we also sell to the United States, we could offset the two. So if you've got a creditor um, in dollars and a debtor in dollars, well, if you can um, pay and receive on the same future date, then that's a natural hedge. So they just offset. So the positive movements um, in the exchange rate on the import will be offset by negative movements on the export or the other way around. So if the rand strengthens, it's good for importing, but it's bad for exporting. That will cancel out. So that's a natural edge. You don't have to do anything. You just set off a customer and a supplier. Leads and lags is, say we have, we import 100,000 US dollars now and we only have to pay in three months time. Well, if we want to leave the payment, we could pay today at the spot rate and then we're also not exposed to the exchange rate. A lag might be, say we um, currently, we imported something for $100,000, but we also have a customer in the US that pays cash. So we could lag that receipt of the cash so that it falls on the same date that we have to pay our supplier in the US. And that creates a natural hedge. So that's if we lag something. So usually we'll lead, lead the payment or receipt to just do it at spot rate. So that brings us to the three different hedges um, that we covered. And this is what we want to explain in this video, just to clarify what they are. So the first one, foreign exchange contract. So the foreign exchange contract is a contract we entered into with something like a bank, a financial institution. So it's a piece of paper. It says this is a contract to buy. So say I imported goods from the United States for $100,000 and I have to pay it back in three months time. So in three months time, I'm going to need US dollars. So I'm going to have to pay my supplier in dollars. I don't have dollars, I have to buy it. So now I enter into a contract with the bank, the FEC, to buy $100,000 US dollars at a forward rate of 15 rand 50 per US dollars in three months time. So this forward rate is something that is negotiated with the bank or the bank will quote this forward rate. Now in class we did the money market hedge to explain how the bank will determine that forward rate. The reason for that was the bank will need to hedge themselves against this. Because remember there's a risk for them to guarantee a forward rate in three months time because anything can happen in the meantime and the bank has to carry that risk. So they will hedge themselves with a the money market hedge. So you in a test, if you get a forward exchange contract, don't have to do a money market hedge. All you do is take the dollar amount or the foreign currency amount and multiply it by the applicable forward rate for the time period um, of the hedge. So here we only have one rate, 1550, but remember um, you'll be given a bid and an offer rate. So if you have a contract to buy foreign currency, it will be at the higher rate, the rate the bank sells to you at, so the offer rate. If you enter to, into a contract to sell US dollars, so you sell it back to the bank, you'll sell it at the lower rate. You'll get less rands for your dollars. So just take note of the, the, there's a bid and the offer rate. And remember, the bid and offer rate is always from the viewpoint of the bank. They will buy from you at the lower rate and sell dollars to you at the higher rate. So you'll always buy high. And sell low to the bank. So, remember, so FEC is just a contract, there's no cash flow initially, the only cash flow is at the end, after three months, you will do what the contract says. So, you buy dollars at the forward rate, or you will sell dollars at the forward rate. So, that's the only cash flows on the FEC. That's a straightforward one. Then, you might want to wait and see what the spot rate does. So that's when you might want to enter into a currency option. So the option is, it gives you the right to buy 
not the obligation. So you can, if you want to buy $100,000 at a strike price, so that's like a forward rate, but this is called a strike price, 1550 per US dollar, and it expires in three months' time. And because this is a flexible instrument and you have the right, but you don't have to, you don't have the obligation to, so you can choose at any time depending on whether the strike price is higher or lower than the spot rate at that time. Because this instrument gives you that flexibility, they charge you a premium. And that's the, the cost of this option. So in this case, they quote 1% of the strike price. So we can calculate it. $100,000 times 50 rand 50. That should be a dollar sign. Times 1%. So it's 15,500 rand. So in order to get this piece of paper, this option, you have to pay the bank upfront 15,500 rand. After that, you can wait and see. So if the spot rate on the payment to the supplier, on the date of payment to the supplier, is 14 rand per US dollar, then you'd rather take the spot rate of 14 rand and pay the bank 100,000, or pay the supplier 100,000 dollars using the spot rate of 14, so 1.4 million. But, so in that case, you don't want to exercise the option. You don't want to exercise your right. So you just tear up the option. You just let it lapse. It will expire then after three months. On the other hand, if the, if the spot price on the settlement date is uh, 16 rand per US dollar, then it's more expensive. So then you'd rather take this option and exercise your right. So you'll go to the bank and say, I've got this option. I want to exercise my right to buy 100,000 US dollars at the strike price of 15 rand 50. And the bank has to honor that. So, um, just something else that, that is not mentioned here, but an option could either be a call option or a put option. A call option is just a name for an option that gives you the right to buy foreign currency. A put option is the option that gives you the right to sell a, a, a foreign currency. So just remember that if you import, you'll uh, buy, enter into a call option or buy a call option. If you export, so you want to take your US dollars that you receive from your customer and sell it to the bank, you'll buy a put option or you will sell forward a put option. Take out a put option. Then the last one, the, the last hedge is the money market hedge. And for that, you can see the other two videos that explains how a money market hedge would work for an importer and for an exporter. So, most questions or a lot of questions will give you the different alternatives and you have to recommend which one to use. So, you will calculate the total um, cost or cash flow on each of the different alternatives and you will recommend the one that is the cheapest. Just take note that the option, you can only calculate how much you will pay if you exercise the option. So there's always the possibility of not exercising the option um, and in that case it will make your decision a little bit more difficult. Then remember you might be thinking now but if the bank does the same money market hedge won't uh, and won't the forward exchange contract and the money market hedge be the same? Because remember with, uh, with the forward exchange contract, we calculated this forward rate using the same principles as the money market hedge. But remember, the bank can do the money market hedge on different terms. They might already have an investment account in the US. They might already have uh, facilities to borrow in South Africa. They don't have to go through all the administration. They do hundreds of these transactions every week or month. So they could uh, give you a lower rate for the FEC contract than you can get on the money market account. It could be higher as well, because remember, they need to make a profit, so they could charge you a little bit more. So that's why you always have to calculate the actual cost of each of the different alternative hedges, and then compare it and recommend the cheapest one. For the discussion part of the question, you could go into all the administration involved in um, entering into a money market hedge.